Check out the before. Eh. Eh. Ugh. Like, and then you gotta just, ugh. And like, this doesn't do anything. But now I'm super excited because I got one of these from the homies at Tessery. We partnered up to show you how to install this power frunk and see if you want to get one of these for yourself. Check out these new struts. They're a lot beefier. Check us out. They're thicker. They're thick boys. And they're gonna be replacing these skinny guys right here. You're gonna be replacing those. And you're gonna wanna replace these brackets right here. They come with new brackets. We'll see where they are in a second. It comes with this latch part and that's the electronic latch that pops it open, pops it closed. It has this mechanism. So we have all of this. And this is for if you want to screw it to the post for your battery to give it some power. We of course have the wiring harness to connect everything, super nicely packaged. We have an emergency release wire. We have the brackets for the struts I was just talking about. And then we have the control box that just controls everything. Some 3M pads to stick her down and some zip ties, mandatory. And these are long zip ties, yeah. Let's get started with this install. First up, removing this panel. Let's grab it. Pull it upwards. It's just held on by all these white clips. The next trim panel you're gonna wanna remove is this one right here. All you need to do really is clear some space, but just pull this up and it should pry off very easily. Just pull up like that. There's gonna be a singular wire connecting to it and that's for that front part. You just pull this off. Maybe do it with one hand. Oh, we did it with one hand. I'll just take this off. The thing to remove the big thing is going to be taking out uh, these bolts. So there's a bolt here, that's one. There's a bolt here, that's two. Bolt here, that's three. And then there's two bolts under here. That's four, five. And then we have six, seven. So we remove those bolts. Then we remove the whole front tub. Oh, no way. <gasps> what? I forgot the drill battery, yo. You're joking. You're actually joking. I'll have this in the description below the like button. You should always carry this in your car. Check this out, it's 46 piece. And it's a whole socket set. We're just gonna use this and manually undo all of them. Careful of these wires. If you guys got any like frunk lights or anything in here, make sure you disconnect these because you don't wanna have these pull in when you're pulling this guy out. Okay, careful of the clips on the side. And if you didn't know, now you know what underneath the frunk tub looks like. I'm a rear wheel drive. So normally, if you're not a rear wheel drive, you would have a motor chilling right underneath there. But since I'm only rear wheel drive, I have an empty chasm just right there. This is your radiator here, steering rack that goes across. That goes to your actual steering column. You have support beam, super manifold. You have a bunch of cooling stuff. This is where you can check your coolant, by the way, which you may need to refill, may not need to refill. Here's your battery right here. You have your brake. You have your wiper fluid, and then you have your aftermarket stuff just everywhere. We're really gonna be paying attention more to the front area. You don't have to worry about any of those, but it does look pretty cool. Just take a second, step back, and be like, wow, this is what inside of a Tesla looks like. I kinda lied because we're definitely gonna wanna start out up here. It's going to be the strut area. We're just gonna replace one strut at a time. So come over to the box here. Let's grab our brackets and let's grab both struts. I do wanna take a second and point out the differences here. There is, if we open both of these up, a left hand and a right hand side of these brackets. So this one has an L on it with an arrow. This one has an R with an arrow. You'll know which is which because the arrow is pointing forward. That's towards the car. So this one is going to be on the right side. That would be this side, the driver's side. So this one is going to sit here. It's gonna mount onto the factory mounting location. And the left one is going to sit on the left side and it's gonna to mount to the factory location there. For these ones, it doesn't matter which is which on the struts. So we'll start with the pick and that's going to be to undo this strut. If you look really closely right here, you can slide a pick tool in here. And that's what's actually gonna allow you to pull this out. That's a locking mechanism that secures it to that post. You're gonna do that for there, and then you're gonna repeat it with this bottom one. Struts removed. We can take our brand new strut. The chunky part is gonna go on the bottom. All we need to do is slide it in. So just boom, it's locked in. We want to use that newer bracket. So let's go ahead and undo these. Get our new bracket. Remember, it's forward facing. Lock this in place. 
There's a little bit of play up and down to it. What I'm gonna do is just let it drop down and then I'm going to secure it with the 13 mils. From there, we'll just lift our strut up and then we're gonna want to put it in place. You can lower or raise the hood as you need to to get it to fit and then it's locked in there. Now these struts are gonna have a lot more resistance on it when you push it, because they're electronic. Now do the exact same thing to the other side. Pause the video or just rewind it and we'll do it together again. Just gonna mark around the area, drawing like this, because we want to align the whole latch up again later. And then on this side, following the edges is pretty much it. And this is just so you can easily align the latch. There's a lot of play, and if your hood it sits a little bit too above, or if you have a little bit of an underbite, this is your chance to fix it. You can move the latch up and down, side to side, whatever have you. Like if it's squeaking, you can move it side to side, and that usually helps that. So if you're confident in your writing now, you just gotta remove those 10 mils. You're gonna want to grab this from the kit, this little latch part with the tube, the emergency release tube coming out of it. You're gonna want to grab the latch that's still attached to the car. You'll notice that there is this little black part right here. This is for the emergency release back here. And we're going to need to put that on the latch of the one that came with the car. Take your pliers and there is this spring. The spring has a little tab that comes out of it right here. And all we're going to want to do is pull this tab out from the metal part that's like a circle that sits on top of it. We can do that by pushing it down and then pulling it out. So you'll see that this tab is now free. That little ring for the emergency relatch, this one right here, the little emergency release onto there. Hey there, editing Brandon here. I thought it would be a little bit easier to show this to you in post. The aftermarket latch sits behind the OEM one, the one that comes with your car. So when you put them together, you're going to want to align the bolt holes here and then on this side as well. I know you're looking at it upside down, but you basically want to make sure it's aligned. The aftermarket one sits back here. You can see the OEM one is in front. We're just gonna grab this guy and we need to put it over that guy. That's pretty much it. It's just gonna sit in there like that. And now we need to put that spring back. So we can let this dangle and then pull that spring back into place. Hold it tight, hold it tight. Oh, it's better to grab it at the end, by the way. That way, pull it in, slap it in there. Be very careful. You don't want to cut yourself or let that spring go loose and accidentally hit your hand. So maybe wear gloves as well. And that's it all in place. And you can still see that little loop that we have going around this guy right here. The thing that's going to pull it. That's just that little black plastic right there. You can see the spring is engaged. Everything looks good. It's time for the big guy now. The wiring harness is a long, it is a lot. There's a lot to plug into, so let's get started. Really, we're gonna be focusing on these cables right now. We're just focusing on cables five, six, seven, eight. Just these guys for now. So separate them from the rest, grab these. Let's go ahead and start plugging them in. D5 plugs into the emergency release latch. I already mounted it, my fault. It's basically just going to clip on there and it sits there. And check this, it'll come out. It's going to be this wire, this black one, not the green one, but this black one and it goes all the way to the controller up there. So again, this D5 is for the emergency release, and that is where I mounted it down there. Kind of on the brace right there behind the fog lights, I just zip tied it down. D6 is easy to see if you just come straight in like this, and you look down on the bottom left or the passenger side, it's this right here. That's what it's controlling. It's the plug right here. So locate it and then come over to this plug. All you're going to want to do is pull this clip back and then pull it down and it's going to come out. And the splitter looks just like that. You're going to split the connection, make sure it's going to our controller, and then just plug this into here again. That's your D6. And lastly, D7 and D8 have to do with this latch and the aftermarket latch. We're going to actually start with D8. So D8 goes in front. It's for that OEM latch. To do this one, all you're going to do is, there should be, if there's an OEM one, a clip right here that's red. You're just going to want to push it out like that and then keep pulling it by that clip, guiding it with back here, and then this will come out. From there, 
It's basically this one. And you're going to put the splitter in here, split that connection so that the controller can read it, and then it goes into here. So OEM, splitter, splitter, and then this goes to our controller. For this one in the D7, I just ran it along the bottom until it went up there. Those are those cables. For this D7 right here, it, there's no splitter. It just is how it is. It comes with the kit, not with the car. So it sits on the aftermarket part. And then this wire is gonna go to our controller, again, just up that way. That's going to be this one. And so those are all your cables, how they're routed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Wires D3 and D4 are for the struts. So they look like this and they just connect like this. There's two for each of them. So one, two, one, two. It doesn't matter which one it goes into, but as you can see, if we fall around that thick wire right there, it's gonna go to the strut. And I like to wire it underneath here or underneath here. That keeps the wiring a little bit cleaner for these ones. And then just go ahead and connect that big wire to the controller. Let's do a little test. One cool feature about this power closing frunk is you can start closing it by just kind of tugging on this and it will start closing. Anti-pinch technology, check that out it's going to stop right there. So if you have your head leaned over and it hits you, it will stop. And then you can just go ahead and raise it back up. It's just that simple. And if you want to start it closing again, you just pull it down, it'll start closing, anti-pinch. If it's far enough up, it'll actually move back up. So that's pretty cool. Let's do that emergency release now. Come down below here and pop this out. Take your two thumbs, and you're just gonna to want to press this towards the headlight. Just press up and push in, press up, push in, and you should be able to pull this out. There you go, pops out. You also are gonna want to make sure these cables come out with it, and that's how you would jumpstart your frunk if the power was dead. So you could take like a nine volt battery, you could take a jump starter, and you would tap these two cables to it, and that's how you would basically wake up the car should you need to. Mine came out, but normally they sit in this little hook part right here in the middle. Oh, that plastic metal sound. Oh, it's bad, it's hurting my ears. Now we're just gonna wire the cable kind of through here to come out here in case we need it. For this, it's pretty simple. Just get some electrical tape and a flashlight. I can just use my headlamp here, turn it on. You're going to want to take it and shine it right here. That's gonna help you look on this side of the car, on the inside. You'll see the light coming through and be able to kind of shove it that way. Now there is kind of a cross beam in the way. So what might also help is like a fishing wire. You can push it through this side and then pull it through the other side. And just like that, we got it over here. We can use that electrical tape and just tape the loop to our wire and then fish it through on the other side. And there you have it. Manually close this really quick. So we're gonna pull it down. We're going to push it in. It looks like that alignment is good. So the alignment should look like that. It's kind of hard to tell with my white lines, but everything should look flush. There shouldn't be a lot of gapping in between the hood. And now if I go into the Tesla app, we'll go into controls, open. And there it is, guys. It opens just like that. Let's go ahead and try to close it. So pressing it, a little bit of a delay, but oh, that was mint. Can we, can we see that again, guys? Cause like, That is, you can't tell me that's not solid. I mean, come on, come on. That is just a statement. With this, the frunk becomes usable now. You don't have to grab it and then close it and then there's fingerprints, you get it dirty. You don't have to do any of that. You have this, a powered frunk, y'all. Let's put everything back together, close it up. I don't really care for the speaker, but it is important for one thing, and that's if you want to adjust the height of the frunk. Yes, you can adjust how much this opens or how tall it opens. You can also adjust how fast it opens. And these are based off beeps when you hold a button on the controller. Just gonna go ahead and plug this into our D2. Think one beep saves the height. Six beeps is the fastest speed. There's like four beeps for almost fast, five beeps are pretty fast. And there is a button back here. You're not really gonna be able to see it, but on the opposite end of this, 
there's a little rubber button. Feel around, I can feel it. I'm just gonna press and hold it till I hear six beeps. Pressing and holding. I don't, oh, oh, that's loud, bro. That's really loud. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and test it again. See how fast it works. Oh, that's so loud. Oh, that is a lot faster though. Guys, that beeping really sucks and that's why I don't use a speaker. Let's go ahead and frunk it. That is a lot faster. We have a powered frunk. Let me know what you think of this mod in the comments below. I think it's the best mod, I really do. In terms of just a daily driving car, which is what a Model 3 or a Model Y really is. It's a daily driving car. And sure, you can mod it to look like a race car and it's great for that. But if you wanna daily drive it, this is great. You can store all your things up here, up and ready for it to be used. Let me know in the comments below if you would get something like this. Remember, another way to close it is like this. It's so great. It's so good. If you want to pick one up for yourself, I'll have it in the description below the like button. Let me know if you grab one and if you need any install help, just drop a comment below. I always respond so you know I'll always help you out. Thanks for joining me on this install.